There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about an experiment you would have done in class, where we compare the voltage produced by different combinations of electrodes. In this video, we're going to cover the same kind of concept, but how you can actually calculate that, so how you can calculate the voltage using different electrodes. I'm going to cover the actual dot point. It says solve problems and analyze information to calculate the potential E, which is the cell potential, so E stands for cell potential, requirement of named electrochemical processes using tables of standard potential and half equations. So I'm going to cover first what this, again, what this um, cell potential means. And cell potential simply means how much voltage is produced or how fast electricity flows, how fast electricity or electrons flow. So the more voltage, the more positive it is, the faster they flow. We also have this um, table of standard potentials. I'm going to cover the standard potential for the negative ones. This is the reduction potential table. Reduction potential table. And remember what reduction meant. Reduction was the gain of electrons. So this table looks at numbers. It compares different types of metals and how likely they are to gain electrons. So if it's positive, so positive means that in this table, positive means that they like to gain electrons. So likely to gain electrons. And negative means that they are unlikely to gain electrons. So I'm just going to write unlikely. But that they're unlikely to gain electrons. So for example, we said that copper is one that really likes to give, uh, take electrons. So copper in this case is positive because it likes to take electrons. Whereas zinc, which we have many examples in the past, zinc is negative because zinc is more of a giver. So zinc likes to give, not take. This table just looks at how much reduction potential they have, so how much potential they have for gaining electrons. And we need to use this table to actually come up with our cell potential. And the last part of that equation, or that sub stop point, the half equations, I'll cover in a second as well. I'll start with actually the calculations that you need to do to be able to calculate the cell potential. So this formula is generally what you use. You've got your cell potential equals your half cell for reduction plus your half cell for oxidation. I'll explain what that means in a second. Before I start, I want to make sure we go over this galvanic cell again. I've got a anode and a cathode. On my anode, I've got zinc. This here is zinc, which I've had in most of my examples in the past as well. So this is the anode. And then I've got copper on the other side. In this case, copper is my cathode. So I've got copper, which is my cathode. Um, now when it comes to where oxidation and where reduction occurs, remember that oxidation usually occurs at the anode, and reduction usually occurs at the cathode. So this is asking for the cell potential for the half cells of reduction and oxidation. So reduction occurs at the copper. This so reduction is referring to the copper one. In this case, this is the copper, because reduction occurs at the copper. And the other one, the oxidation, because oxidation occurs at the anode. This is referring to zinc. Now, when it comes to using this table, um, the first part is really easy. We need to look at the actual reduction potential. And we can get for the copper, we can get that straight off the table. Because E reduction equals the potential for copper on this table. So all we have to do is we have to get, I'm going to write the whole thing like how you would actually have to write it as well. You'd have to write um, so equals copper 2 plus and it goes to copper. So that means copper being reduced, so it's oxidation number being reduced from 2 plus to 0. Or you can also say it just gains electrons. And then we have to plus that in terms of 
oxidation. So this is the zinc part. So zinc is not being reduced, it's being oxidized. So what that means, it has, it starts with um, just zinc in its elemental state, so it has an oxidation number of zero. And it goes into zinc 2 plus, which means its oxidation number has been oxidized, hence oxidation. And then what you do for the first part, for the reduction part, all you do is you look at the table. And this is the, this is it. So it's got copper gaining two electrons and going into, into copper um, into its elemental state, solid state. So copper ion into co copper elemental. And there we have plus 0 0.34. So 0 0.34 for this part. And then we have to plus whatever the oxidation for zinc was, the number for zinc, but the problem is we only have this table, which is a reduction potential table. So if we look at where zinc is, zinc has 0 0.76 for the reduction potential for zinc, right here. But because this is reduction and we're looking for oxidation, oxidation is the loss of electrons, and this table gives us the potential or the likelihood of it gaining electrons. All we have to do is flip this number, right? So if we have to flip that number, and then we get what the oxidation potential is. So in this case, it's zero minus zero seven point minus zero point seven six for the reduction potential. If you flip that number, then we get the potential for the oxidation. Right. So it was minus point zero seven six, but now we just put it down as plus seven point six, and that gives us again. I've done the calculation beforehand. That gives us a total value of one point one volts. And because it's positive, overall positive, that means the reaction will go ahead. If it's negative, well, I'll show you next. Then the reaction won't go, won't go ahead. And this was so. This was the the actual um, uh, question. Use the table to find the cell potential for zinc, um, elemental zinc going into ions, zinc ions. And on the other half equation, we had copper ions going into copper elemental. This was what we just did. Now here we've got another one, which is Use table to find the cell potential for elemental silver going into, I forgot the actual plus, going into elemental iron. And at the cathode, the first part here is always the, so this part is always the anode, the first part of our reaction or our equation. And this is always the cathode. So in this case, this is the anode, so this is the one that's meant to give electrons, and this is one that meant, is meant to take electrons. So here we've got our, in this case, silver, that's Ag is silver, at our anode. And copper, again, copper at our cathode, like we did last time as well. Copper at our cathode. And now we have to again look at the same procedure. So first you can write the equation. So a reduction occurs at the cathode, so we gotta take copper again. So the same as we did beforehand, we write the overall reaction, which is copper ions two plus going into elemental copper. That means the actual copper has gained two electrons. So its oxidation number has been reduced from two plus to zero, hence reduction. And for oxidation, so for silver silver has to give electrons, so it would go from Ag, which is elemental silver, into Ag+, plus, which is its ion form. So overall, its oxidation number has gone from 0 to 1, so it's been oxidized. Or another way you can look at it is it's given away an electron. Now again, when it comes to numbers, you just look at the table. So the same for copper as beforehand. Here was copper. So this is the reduction potential table. And we're looking for cell potential of reduction. So just take that, whatever the number is, take it and put it down. 0 0.34. Just talking about volts, by the way. So volts. And for silver, now this is the tricky part, or not the tricky part, but the part where things start working. Um, because the, in this case, our silver is actually the anode. So the one that is supposed to give electrons, but it has a uh, cell equation or a cell potential for reduction of 0 0.8. It, likes, it means it likes to take electrons, not give electrons, but because we have oxidation, we're looking for oxidation, we have to flip that number again. So at the moment it's plus, but we then we make it into a minus. So this gives us minus 0 0.8 volts, 
And again, I don't, didn't call it kill. And again, I did the calculations beforehand. This actually gives us minus, so minus 0 0.46 volts. Again, because we're having a positive and they're taking away 0 0.8, minus 0 0.8 volts. So overall, it's negative, which means there will be no reaction that occurs. All right, so if it's positive, that means a reaction will occur. It means you have electrons flow. If it's negative voltage, so this, this here gives you a negative voltage, that means that nothing happens, which makes sense because silver is less active metal than copper. And remember that electrons only flow from the more active metal to less active metal. So the second part, which I'm going to quickly cover as well, was all about being able to write the half equations. For, so I'm going to write the half equations for both A and B. So A was that zinc and copper. So this was our anode half equation. And the other one was our cathode half equation. Remember at anode we have oxidation that occurs, so the loss of electrons. And at our cathode we always have reduction occurring, so reduction means the gain of electrons. So our half equations is simply, in this case, zinc, which is right here, zinc, elemental zinc, going into zinc 2 plus, so it's lost two electrons, hence it's been oxidized. Oxidized. Whereas our reduction half cell, we've got copper, it gains those two electrons. Copper ions gains those two electrons and becomes uh, elemental copper. This is actually meant to be solid here and aqueous here. But this here has been reduced because it has its oxidation number reduced from plus two to zero because elemental is always zero. Now for the overall reaction you don't have to you don't have to write the actual electrons, you just have to write zinc solid plus copper two plus going into zinc two plus and copper elemental. So what happened is we had zinc, which gave two electrons to that copper ion, and then zinc became oxidized, it lost those two electrons, and copper took those two electrons to become reduced. That's your overall re reaction, your net ionic equation. And these were your half cell equations. Now when it comes to silver, this is again, this is the part where you, again, there's a slight change. Um, because first of all, we've got our oxidation half cell, which is in this case silver, going from silver, elemental, into um, ionic silver and it's lost one electron so it's been oxidized. And that's your oxidation half cell. Reduction half cell we've got copper taking the, that those electrons but it takes two electrons and it goes from copper ions to elemental copper so it's been reduced. But the one thing you look at is it says it, copper takes two electrons to go from copper to two from copper ions to its elemental copper but silver only gave away one. So to balance that equation, what we actually have to do is we have to write a two in front of the silver to make sure that because if you have two, that means we've also actually given away two electrons because each silver only gives away one electron. So two silver plus that copper ion, which is solid, goes into, sorry, which is the aqueous one, which goes into two silver ions, again plus one not plus two because um, silver only gives away one, and then copper in its solid form. So this, so what you could be asked is to use those reduction potential tables which you, you won't have memorized because you could be given them in the exam, but you might be used to, ask, to answer questions with those kind of um, ones that I showed you beforehand. And you might also be asked to write your half equations and your overall reactions. Um, but they are both relatively straightforward. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.